water it is important for the plants for their proper growth and development okay because water is one of the third most important necessity for a living organism if we talk about what happens in the moat or the pulley system here it is a type of manual irrigation and in this what is the source of water from which we are taking out the water or the buckets attached on this wheel would take out the water from this water source then it would supply the water to the canal and then this canal is further diverted in the field so as to supply water. Hello dear students, you all are welcome. So students, as in the previous lecture, we learned about the phenomenon of manuring. Also, we ended the lecture by learning about the methods for maintaining soil fertility without adding any fertilizers. So any guesses, what would be the next step that we are going to discuss? Well, students, the next step in the agricultural practices is going to be the irrigation. Now students, why we are discussing the same? As we know that plants they require water and carbon dioxide to perform basically the process of photosynthesis yes or no that is the process to prepare their own food right so students for a crop to get grown properly it would require the water as well okay and as we know that in India a large number of farmer depend on the rainfall for their field to get irrigated particularly also, however, this rainfall, it varies from place to place and sometimes the rainfall is not provided in the sufficient amount at the right time to the field. Okay, hence the farmer need to just see of the other ways to irrigate the field. So, what is irrigation exactly? Well, students, when we irrigate the land, we define it as the artificial supply of water to the field at regular intervals is to be called as the process of irrigation irrigation okay now why we are discussing about this process of irrigation is it that important well yes students it is very very important from the context of the growth of the plants so here we have a list of some of the points that we are going to discuss that why irrigation is so important okay so the first point it says that as we know that water it is important for the plants for their proper growth and development okay because water is one of the third most important necessity for a living organism to survive on this earth certainly okay students now the next importance of this water is that it maintains the moisture of the soil now what is the significance of this moisture well students moisture it prevents the plant from getting damaged by the action of frost or by the action of hot air currents also this particular water it helps in the germination of seeds and elongation of roots as well okay students now the next important one is going to be that the time and frequency of irrigation it kind of varies from crop to crop like we discussed about the types of crop in the starting lectures or in the initial ones where we learned about one of the type of crop was kharif crop another one was the rabi crop okay so talking about both of them if we talk about the kharif crop they require a lot of water okay while if we talk about the rabi crop they don't require that much amount of water okay similarly soil to soil like if a particular crop is sown in the loamy soil then it would require the moderate amount of water while if the crop is sown in case of sandy soil although sandy soil is not suitable for the growth of all the types of crop but let's say if we are growing a particular crop in the sandy soil so as the sandy soil has the particles a little bit bigger in size so their water percolation rate is higher so that they require more amount of water while if we talk about the clay soil as the clay soil has the property to hold the water in a sufficient amount that's why the clay soil need not to be irrigated that much often okay similarly if we talk about season to season like if we are growing or we are cultivating a particular crop in the summer season so that particular crop would be requiring more water because of the heat of the sun much of the water might get evaporated okay students and if we are cultivating a particular crop in the winter season what happens to that we don't need to put so much of effort to supply the water to the field 
okay students now this was all about the importance of irrigation now the question arises like we are going to supply the water in an artificial manner so what would be the sources of the same well if we talk about the very first source it is going to be the well itself now well what is a well well is an excavation or a structure that is created by digging driving or drilling in the ground so as to gain the liquid resources that are available underground okay so that is what we mean by the well now the next source that is going to be is the lake now what is lake it is a large area as we can see over here it is a large area surrounded by the land and having the water in it okay so students this is what is lake now the third one or the last one we can say well what is this this is the canal these are the engineered channel or artificial waterways which are created so as to supply the water for irrigation to the fields which are away from the rivers lakes etc okay so these are the sources now the question arises how we are going to lift the water out from these sources because they are providing the water okay but we need to just lift them off out of them okay so here we have the solution for the same now how we are going to lift the water we can either go for cattle or human labor which are quite cheaper but sadly they are less efficient also means they would take much of the time to take out the water from these water sources okay so what is the modern method that we use over here well students we use the pumps which run by the diesel biogas electricity or the solar energy so as to excavate the water or so as to pump out the water from these water sources now students as we have discussed about the importance of irrigation also we discussed about the sources of water from where we are going to take out the water for irrigation certainly now with that we need to proceed further and we need to discuss about the traditional methods of irrigation which involves the four methods where the first one is going to be the moat or pulley system the second one is going to be the chain pump third one is going to be the dekli and the last one is going to be the rahat or the lever system now students we are going to discuss them one by one in detail so starting with the very first one that is moat or pulley system here we go if we talk about what happens in the moat or the pulley system here it is a type of manual irrigation and in this what is the source of water from which we are taking out the water well it is a well we can see over here okay so what happens in this manual irrigation as we can see a child standing over here and there is a pulley over here okay so he is going to pull out the water out of the well with the help of this pulley and then he is going to spill over the water into the field manually okay so let us see how does he does that so we are going to learn about the moat or pulley system here we go in this this boy he is taking out the water with the help of the pulley that is placed over this well and with the help of this bucket now this boy is going to take this bucket and spill or pour over the water into the field now if we talk about this method students so this method it is very very time consuming and labor intensive no matter what how perfectly we do perform this particular method but it results in the waste of water so we can say that this moat or pulley system it is kind of a curse for the poor water region because a lot of water would be wasted by this method and also it is not uniformly supplying the water to the each and every crop present over in the field certainly now talking about the next method that we have over here it is going to be the chain pump now what is chain pump chain pump it is a type of water pump in which an endless chain is there on which circular disc or the buckets are placed and one end of this chain is dipped into the water source now students if you see what is the water source that is acting over here as we have discussed it is going to be this kind of 
tank over here which is acting as a reservoir placed in the field okay so this is acting as the source of water from which the water is to be pumped out okay and there you see there is the canal that has been built over now this canal would be supplying the water to the crops that are present all over the field okay students so if we see over here what would happen and how it would happen so here we go this is how this chain particularly works over here and this bucket comes up with the water and then it drains the water into this canal and this canal serves as the source to supply the water to the field or to the crops that are present in the field certainly okay now moving on to the next method that we have over here it is going to be the dhekli system now students in this dhekli system it is somewhat the replica of the pulley or the moat system now what happens over here as you can see it requires two individuals to participate in the same okay so one of the individual is going to hold this log of the wood okay and there also this particular structure is placed so that he can just pull over the water out of this well now what is the source over here it is going to be this particular well okay so how does it works let us see that this is how it would work the first person he is going to push it down okay like this he is going to push it down and the another person is going to take the bucket and he is going to pour it over the field but this is again also a time consuming labor intensive process and it is also resulting in the wastage of water okay and as we know that water is one of the important natural resource which cannot be wasted so easily so that is why this method is also kind of a curse for the poor water regions okay students now the last but not the least one that we are going to discuss is going to be the rahat oldiver system now why this method is called as the rahat method because the students it is not involving any human labor over here it is dependent on the livestock as the labor means it is dependent on the oxes buffalo or the cattles we can say over here okay so what happens in this particular process is that it requires a large well as we can see over here there is a tank like a structure that has been built over here okay and in that well or the tank this kind of large wheel has to be placed on which circular disc or buckets are attached over here okay and this wheel students if you see over here in detail so it is connected to this particular thing which is to be rotated by these cattles in the field okay so how it would work the moment these kettle starts moving the wheel would start moving and this wheel would take out the water or the buckets attached on this wheel would take out the water from this water source then it would supply the water to the canal and then this canal is further diverted in the field so as to supply water so it is kind of a thing which works on a little bit automation okay so here we go how does it works here we can see these kettles which are just having this particular log of wood attached to their neck okay and this particular log it is attached to this wheel so let's see how does it works if we just focus over here so the moment they would start moving the rotation of this wheel placed over here would occur and then the water would be provided via the canal diverted further into the field so this is how irrigation is done without involving too many humans okay students so these were all about the traditional methods of irrigation now students as we are done with it so we need to proceed further and we need to discuss about some of the questions related with the topics that we have studied till now starting with the very first question that we have it says that agricultural fields must maintain their fertility in order to keep up productivity which among the following is the most effective method that farmers can adopt to keep the soil fertile now as it is talking about the fertility of the soil means the replenishment of the nutrients in the soil it is talking about okay so let's see the first option repeatedly growing the same crop in the field now if we are going to practice mono cropping so what would it result it would make the soil less fertile or devoid of the nutrients so this is not the correct one talking about the next 
next one providing adequate irrigation facilities and drainage system well yes it is helpful to grow the crops but it is not contributing in making the soil fertile so we cannot consider this one now talking about the next one regular tilling of the field so that it holds more air and water now if we will regularly till the field so what would happen the soil layer or the soil horizons may get disturbed or deteriorated so that would not help in making the soil fertile so this is again incorrect one now talking about the next one rotating crops in the field so yes students if you recall we learned about under the topic of methods for maintaining soil fertility that crop rotation is one of the method by which we can simply enrich the nutrients in the soil or we can simply replenish the nutrients in the soil as well as the new nutrients that are present in the soil it's to be utilized by the crop one by one not all at once okay so students this fourth option is going to be the correct answer of the given question now talking about the next question the second question for the same here we go a farmer mixes fertilizer with water and uses it for his crop why does he mix the fertilizer with water okay because we know that fertilizers they are found in the powdered form and they are very well soluble in water okay so to enable the roots to easily absorb it well yes to enable the leaves to easily absorb it no leaves are not in direct contact with the soil so how they can easily absorb it to enable the plant to carry out photosynthesis well fertilizer does not directly contribute in the process of photosynthesis next to enable the stem to easily absorb it no this is not that much correct so the correct answer of this question would be the very first option that is to enable the roots to easily absorb it okay because root has the root hairs which are in direct contact with the soil so it would be viable for them to easily absorb the same now talking about the next question that we have over here it says that suman lives in a rural area of punjab and her family depends on the crop yield for their household income for irrigating the field what source her father can prefer now students what source can he prefer well yes he can dams yes he can not directly he can but from the dams there are the canals that are created next one is canal yes he can so the last one is going to be all of these so well students the correct answer for the given question is going to be all of these certainly now talking about the next question or the last question of this particular topic it says that method of irrigation in which small circular disk are attached on an end less chain is just now we have learned about the water pump system now let's say what is it named as rahat no rahat is the liver system in which we rely on the livestock okay next is chain pump yes students this is going to be the correct answer of the given question now students this was all about this particular lecture i hope you all have understood the topic very well kindly go through the content and dpp provided to you as well thank you